think if you're someone who gets easily overstimulated, this is definitely not the place for you. Definitely not. I think it's needless to say that this video will contain a lot of flashing lights. So we just made it to Kawasaki Station and right now we're going to check out Anata no Warehouse. The design of Anata no Warehouse is based upon Kowloon Walled City, a densely populated and lawless area of Kowloon City in Hong Kong. It seems to be an odd choice to create an arcade that focuses on a seedy haven of everything crime related, but Japan saw a marketing opportunity and it worked out. Anata no Warehouse became a popular attraction housing a dystopian installation and many high tech as well as retro arcade games. As you enter, you are greeted by reconstruction of Kowloon Walled City. The design is grimy, dingy and dirty, on purpose. All the touches add to the overall aesthetic. Even the vending machines look run down, but the product inside, however, is actually just as clean as it can be. They're not actually dirty, it's all part of the decor. There's an escalator inside, so we're going upstairs now to get a full view over the Kowloon City. Um, so far, it's a little bit manic. And it's definitely an interesting attraction and I feel like it's kind of a shame that they're shutting it down because people are like playing games, they're obviously enjoying themselves. The man behind this recreation is Taishiro Hoshino. Being a set designer and having experience with Kabuki Theatre, him and his designers wanted to create the authentic feeling of Kowloon Walled City. Having realized that a lot of the details that gave the city its infamous atmosphere are not available in Tokyo, there is nothing they could do but make everything from the beginning. The signs, as well as other decor, were actually flown in directly from Hong Kong. Does this not remind you of Shine Light? Like all these buildings and everything. I just feel like this is the perfect setting for a load of zombies to come and attack you. This would make a good video game. Can you hear how noisy it is? So noisy in here. Once you leave the main common area that is inspired by Kowloon Walled City, the rest of the floors are actually pretty normal. They are exactly what you would expect from an extremely noisy arcade housing every arcade game imaginable. All you can see is a huge variety of games including claw machines and some resembling casino style entertainment. It sounds a little bit like a very loud pachinko parlor and the smoking indoors adds to that pachinko parlor vibe. To be completely honest, this probably wouldn't be the best place for your lungs or your ears. How am I not deaf from that? I do not know. I do not know, but I've seen people wear earplugs and I feel like that's very, very smart in this situation. It's not quiet on this level. So here are the quieter games as well as some darts and other things that don't make as much noise. And the further up you go, it's pretty much just, um, as you go further up, it's pretty much just gambling and more games and darts and horse racing type games. So the city of Kowloon itself is mainly just downstairs, the first and the second floor. So I think we're pretty much gonna go soon because, yeah, that's it. I'm so freaking overwhelmed. 
Kawasaki Warehouse opened in 2009. Not only did the patrons love the novelty of what looks like a post-apocalyptic city, but it was also a very popular spot for photographers. After 10 years, it finally closed its doors on November 17th of 2019. This was the day after I arrived back in Japan, and I felt like it was fate for me to go there and experience it for myself. This is also the only place I have seen people be so interested in what is essentially a sexy blow-up doll. This area was the red light district, and it gathered quite a lot of attention. If you are into arcade games, then you still have Taito Station and Club Sega and many, many others. There definitely isn't a shortage of arcade games in Japan, but the majority have a slightly more family-friendly aesthetic. If you are traveling to Tokyo and miss the opportunity to visit Kawasaki Warehouse, then I highly recommend paying a visit to Akihabara or Ikibukuro. Both places have numerous arcades with a great variety of games. Akihabara, especially if you're into shonen manga, anime figurines, hot anime babes, idols, oh, and maid cafes. Many, many maid cafes. And also Ikibukuro, a paradise of shoujo manga, BL manga, hot anime guys everywhere, butler cafes. To be honest, even walking around other areas like Shinjuku, you will come across arcades. All of these places will fulfill your arcade needs. But saying that, nothing can compare to Onatano Warehouse. There was definitely something special about this dark and grimy dystopian city arcade. That was a really cool experience and to be honest I don't know why they're shutting down because there were so many people who were just enjoying playing games and having a really good time. I feel like it's a little bit of a shame that it is closing but at the same time I'm happy that we got to experience it just before it closed. We've made it in really good time today haven't we? Because we can go straight to Shinjuku now to meet up with Amanda and Yuji. Well Yuji first because Amanda's working and she's meeting up with us a bit later. Kawasaki seems to be a very lively area. Um, I really like it a lot actually. But when I first moved to Japan, I actually lived in Kawasaki for a very, very short time and I loved it. I loved it so, so much. Um, but living in Tokyo just makes things a bit more easier to get around. We're getting the train to Shinagawa first and then we're going to Shinjuku. John's just showed me the time lapse that he did. It looks really good. This is going to be my end screen. will be the Oh, that is so nice. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. It's a Japanese sake brand, but it's a sparkly wine. Wow. I kind of want to keep that for like a long time. I'm going to keep it. It's good. That is wrapped so beautifully. It's a it's a sponge cake with the uh, it has a layer of uh, gold on top. There's a plain one and a much uh, one. Ooh, edible gold. Yeah. So this is it for today's video, thank you so so much for watching. We finished the day off in Shinjuku, that seems to be our regular hangout spot whenever we are with our friends, and we always end up in karaoke. It is a great conclusion to a day. It feels amazing to be back in Japan. I was away for almost three months and it was so refreshing to be in this environment again. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I have a ton of really exciting content coming out, so I cannot wait to share that with you. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.